Today, once and for all, we're gonna fix the distance between your nozzle and your bed height on your Monoprice Select Mini Pro. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And today, once and for all, this is going to be the fourth video I've released on this. I've taken two down, i put up another one, and this is going to be the fourth one I've made. Today, once and for all, we're going to put to rest what you need to do to set the correct distance between your nozzle and your print bed so that your prints will stick and come out fantastic. fantastic. So, let's go over to the printer. Okay, we're going to need to do test prints, so to get started, go ahead and preheat the nozzle. So, I've got everything set up here. This is brand new out of the box. I've just set everything up. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see how a skirt is going to print on this printer. So, um, I'm going to go to the move and the tune and just see where I'm at. And out of the factory, this printer came set at minus 0 0.30. Now, the one I just returned, when it came to me, it was out of the factory set at minus 0 0.02. So a pretty substantial difference between the two. So clearly they do try to work things out, but it doesn't look like they uh, succeed a lot. So we're going to go past that and see what kind of results we get. So I'm just using a print that I have, that I know has a skirt, and I'm gonna push start. Okay, so it hit its working temperature. So it's gonna come back and it's gonna get ready to start. I'm gonna be ready to cancel. It's just gonna verify its location. And say, where's the bed at? Here's the bed. And it's going to come over and then follow the startup G code that I've got in here. And then it's going to go ahead and start trying to print a skirt. And again, I am ready to cancel this should anything start to go haywire because, frankly, I don't know what we're going to get. All right, there it goes. looks a little thin to me and I can see it's not sticking so I'm going to cancel that I'm going to move okay I'm going to get rid of this because I can see it's not sticking and it looks really thin and wispy which is saying to me it's too far away so I'm going to go back and preheat Make sure the nozzle's staying hot. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to move and tune. And clearly the minus 0 0.30 is not good enough. So I'm gonna need to come closer. So I'm gonna close in by say two, I'll go three. All right, and I'll accept that. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to try and print again. Okay, I see it just kind of dragging it around. Not really sticking good. And I just want to give it a fair shot so I can see what I have. Now we can cancel, preheat, keep the nozzle warm. Okay, back, move, raise the nozzle, peel this off. See, it's not stuck down at all. Okay, so print, and I'm doing the exact same print each time. That way, if there's any changes, It'll be because of the printer, not because of the file. 
Okay, so this is a tedious way to do it, but it's a very, very safe way to dial yourself in. Another way is you can set up a model of maybe just a block or a circle and give it a massively giant skirt that will just take a lot of time to print over and over and over again. And as it's going, you can adjust the tune on the fly, keep inching in closer and closer until the skirt starts to print the way it's supposed to. Okay, I knew we were getting close, and this test print is looking really, really good. The skirt is sticking down, and the first piece of what would have been printed is sticking really nicely as well. So I'm letting it go a little bit further than all of the others, just to give it a fair chance and see if it's really doing what it should be doing. Uh, once it's gotten a substantial amount of plastic laid down, I'll go ahead and cancel this print, and I'll peel everything off and see how it comes off and how it was sticking and to check the quality of the layers and the backside and everything. And if I think we've got it, then I'll go ahead and record this number and that will be my offset number from here moving forward. Okay, so I'm landing right about minus 0.82. And I'm, I'm really starting to like what I see. So that is going to be my magic number. Now, of course, if I switch my bed to glass, or if I remove the build tax surface and go to painter's tape or something like that, my number is going to have to change to reflect that change in thickness of the bed. But other than that, minus 0.82 is going to be the uh, setting that I use, and I should have no problem with my prints anymore. If I do it's probably more indicative of a dirty bed than anything else. You remember some of the first prints earlier in this video and how wispy and thin and how lightweight they looked? Look at this. Okay, now that came off pretty easy. That could just be a, a dirty spot in the bed, but look, it's sticking down good. It's really, really consistent. It printed very, very nice. This is just about perfect. Now, when I go ahead and start printing models and whatnot, if, uh, if I feel it needs to be tweaked a little bit more, I can move it another point or two uh, in or out as need be. But for right now, I think this is about where I'm going to stop. With everything looking the way I wanted it, I can go ahead and print a test cube. Uh, this is just to check all the parameters of my printer setup, uh, as well as, of course, the distance between the nozzle and the bed. So I'll go ahead and start that print, and we'll see what we get. And here you can see the final product. The, it printed the test cube beautifully. Everything was perfectly stuck to the bed. I was very, very happy with the results. So barring something changing, uh, I'm going to stick with my current setting. And that's about how you do it.
Now here is what we're shooting for. This is a skirt from a test print of mine, and it is about perfect. It is thick enough that it doesn't break. It is thin enough that you can practically read through it. I mean, it's it's really, really thin. And for our sake here, we'll just put it in the caliper and it's 0.24 millimeters, so about a quarter of a millimeter thick. That's what we're looking for. So if it's too thin and looks scraped, that's too thin, move away. If it's not thin and flat, you're too far away. If it's not sticking, you're too far away. So this is what you're shooting for. Adjust accordingly, do a test print. Adjust, test print, adjust, test print. Is it the long way home? Yes, it is the long way home, but it's the easiest way. There's not a lot of technical mumbo jumbo. Just adjust your offset a few increments at a time and run a test print until you get where you wanna go. Now, once you get there, Remember what that number is, that offset number, because it's never going to change again unless you make a physical change to your print bed. Add glass, you're going to have to change it. Change from build tack to painter's tape, you're going to have to change it. So remember that number. It's your number. That's how your printer is set up. And it doesn't matter if it's 0, uh, 0.02 or if it's 0. 6-7, okay? Every printer is going to be a little bit different. Your number is going to be your number for your printer. All right? Now, there are other things you can do. If you want to really dial things in, you could start by setting the distance between your sensor and your nozzle first. Okay? Because they should be about like this. But when you get your printer, yours may be like this, and mine may be like this, okay? So let's go ahead and just go over to the printer, and I'll show you how to adjust the sensor location. Okay, so my nozzle was actually pretty substantially far away from my bed. And, and part of that is a function of the sensor here. And uh, I reached out to Monoprice, and they sent me some information on how to adjust the sensor. If you do this, you can actually get the, the nozzle and the sensor and the bed better aligned. And instead of having to be minus 0.8 away from or closer to the bed, uh, it, it, you will, you'll have a much smaller adjustment to make. So we're going to start by removing this little piece of tape from the front of the sensor. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And beneath it, you're going to find a little eccentric screw that will alter the position of the sensor. The uh, sensor here, the eccentric screw, it looks like a little hex head, but I couldn't get anything to fit in it because it's so shallow. So just use a little tiny flat head to turn this. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it to the left until we get a uh, uh, no reading from the uh, screen. You'll see the X, Y, and Z uh, markers on your screen, and we want this to go red. Okay, now what we can do is we can go ahead and bring the entire thing down to the bed. And uh, general rule of thumb is to use a piece of paper between the bed and the nozzle. But a friend had suggested, and I think it's a good idea, to use a business card instead. A business card will give you a little bit of room for, uh, you know, like a margin of safety. So instead of a piece of paper, you can use a little bit of a business card here. And what we're doing is we're going to bring the nozzle down until we get nice friction between the nozzle and the bed. Okay? You should feel it when you're trying to pull it out. It should resist you a little bit. You should be able to get it out, but it should resist. Now, whether you're using a piece of paper or a business card, once you have 
that tension between the nozzle and the bed, stick the screwdriver back into the eccentric screw and look at the Z setting on your screen, it should be red, and start to turn it to the right until it goes green again. Okay? So now what we have done is we have properly set the gap between the bed and the nozzle and the sensor. Okay, you're still going to have to fine tune it with some test prints and whatnot, but this is going to make it a lot easier. Now, like I said, I reached out directly to Monoprice, and here's what they wrote me back as to dealing with all this. So for the Mini Pro, what I did myself actually is on the front of the inductive sensor, on the front of the nozzle, there is a this black tape covering the front, kind of hard to notice. Take this tape off and you'll see a rotary screw. This screw adjusts the pickup point for the sensor. I lowered the extruder in the move menu until the sensor is activated. And then I rotate the screw until the Z-axis box in the top left of the screen goes green again. And then load down once more and do this until I get the nozzle really, really close to the bed. Once there, I took a digital caliper and measured from the distance from the sensor to the bed and use that value as my Z access correction and have not had a single leveling issue since. Okay, you can see that's a little bit hard to find and I don't even know how you would get a caliper underneath there to measure that. So I don't know that that's actually really the way to go. I think we're best suited just doing test prints after adjusting the nozzle height. Anyhow, uh, word of caution, whenever you're doing any of this, be ready to cancel your prints at a moment's notice. Always have your finger hovering over the cancel button. Something goes wrong, stop the printer. Okay, so there you have it. There's a lot of different ways to get to the same point, but at the end of the day... Huh? All right, there you have it. There's a lot of different ways to get to the same point, but at the end of the day, the important thing is, is that your nozzle distance is correct from your print bed. If it isn't, you're gonna have nothing but headaches. Your prints aren't gonna stick, they're gonna fail, they're gonna get knocked off. It's just gonna be a nightmare for you. So I really hope this video helped you. If you did like this video, I would ask you to please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the bell, and you'll be uh, notified anytime I release a new video. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions getting out of here. I'm going to wish you the most amazing, super fantabulous day. Until next time, be good.